Each week, a group of people came together to pray for peace in their local church, a place of sanctuary. Each week, people invited others to join them in prayer. Each week, people sang psalms that reminded them that with God's help, they could leap over a wall, reflected on God's promise that the structures that oppress this world will be overcome. Each week, they lit candles as a sign of hope that the darkness might be set ablaze by light. And week by week, the numbers of people kept growing until the church could no longer hold them all, until there were thousands with lit candles filling the city center outside the church, calling for the values of heaven, the freedom, dignity, and respect of all God's children to be reflected in the world in which they lived. Week after week, the people met with lit candles, stood praying and singing as the police looked on and did not know how to react to this wave of light and peace filling the dark winter nights. Until the people had, by their prayer and their persistence, leapt over the wall, toppled it, in fact, and East Germany's borders were opened. The path for Germany to grow together started at Leipzig's Nikolai Church, a church where Johann Sebastian Bach had been the organist, the church where the peaceful movement started that ultimately led to German reunification 30 years ago this weekend. If you are old enough to have witnessed the dramatic pictures of the Berlin Wall being smashed by people from East and West, you will probably remember exactly where you were in that moment. I certainly can remember my tears of joy in my German family home as my divided homeland began to heal and to grow together again. Our faith can change the world. Our courage and community can break down barriers, just as our persistence and prayer can change people and places. And that's precisely what you and I are called to do, change this world by our actions. Because God's plan is for the rule of heaven to be restored across this broken world. And each one of us who believe is called to be a part of this plan. And each one of us has been given special gifts to bring God's plan to change our world to pass. This month, we'll be reflecting together on Paul's letter to the Ephesians. In our services, our sermons, our prayers and Bible studies, we'll be thinking about God's goodness and grace to us. And as we think about God's gift to us, we'll also reflect together on what it is that God calls each one of us to do with the goodness and grace that he's lavished upon us, what he calls each one of us to do and to be to help change our world for good. Paul begins his letter to the Ephesians by sharing with us God's vision for his creation. He shares with us the mystery of God's will. God's will is for all people to be reconciled to one another and to him. Paul tells us this mystery at the beginning of his letter to give us the chance to step back from the day-to-day -day life of being church and to look at the world and our own Christian lives from a much broader perspective. Step back from our daily concerns. Melbourne during a global pandemic, the future of our cathedral ministry during and after COVID-19, and to look at our world in the way that God sees it. And today's epistle reading commences to explore the central themes of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Who is God? What is God's plan for this world? And what is our place in this plan? What is the nature of God's lavish grace to us? And how can we share it with others? Right at the very beginning of his letter, Paul sets out God's vision for this world. Grace to you and peace, Paul writes to the people of Ephesus, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's not just a lovely phrase that Paul uses to start his letter. Rather, it is the primary purpose of God's plan. 
the vision that God has for this world is to be filled with grace, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and for God's people to use those gifts of grace to heal the world and to bring about the gift of peace. Grace and peace stand at the beginning of Paul's letter to invite us, God's people, to share together in being grace bearers and peacemakers, people who proclaim repentance and the forgiveness of sins to all nations, who draw on the knowledge that God loves us and on God's lavish gifts of grace to make and promote peace in our own time and place. This ministry does not come easily or naturally, Paul knows. That's why God's people are equipped for their task with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. The abundant gifts of heaven themselves are granted to God's people for the work of bringing grace and peace to this world. Love and joy, peace and forbearance, kindness and goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. The lavish gifts of God's Holy Spirit are granted to those whom God has chosen to bring about God's plan of grace and peace. It's nice to know, isn't it, that God gives these precious things, precious gifts, to peacemakers and change bringers. Here is the snag, though. There isn't a group of spiritual superheroes who will deliver God's plan for this world. We are God's plan for the world. You and I, we are the peacemakers and change bringers. That is why we need each one of those lavish gifts. We're given heavenly gifts to help us bring about God's plan for the universe, the plan to gather up all things in heaven and earth in Christ. God's plan is for each creature to be reconciled to God. God's plan is for each person to know about and to experience God's grace. And God's plan needs each one of us. It needs all our gifts. Because you and I will be the people who invite others into God's friendship and love. You and I will be the people who reflect God's grace and peace in our behaviors and in our relationships. You and I show by the way in which we build community here at St. Paul's and in which we continue to build a diverse and inclusive community, how other communities can also be changed, how other places and people can be changed until the whole world is reconciled and healed, transformed by and conformed to God's will. Changing the world is a difficult and an arduous task. And I suspect that you would really like to know that we truly are called to be those peacemakers and change makers. That's why we're not only given heavenly gifts to equip us for this mission, but we're also given a pledge of our belonging. Those who believe in Christ Jesus, Paul tells, already fully share in Christ's life. Just as he is the Son of God, we who believe in him are God's daughters and sons. God destined us for adoption as his children. And as the pledge that his vision for our world to be conformed to his will will be fulfilled, in God's time, God gifts us the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit is who unites us with Christ, binds each one of us to God and God to us. God has bestowed on us gifts of wisdom and insight into the plan for his world to be full of grace and peace. God has destined us for love and forgiveness, redemption and salvation. And God trusts us to share this insight with the world. God charges us to change this world by using the gifts that he has given us. Because this world is what we will receive as our inheritance. We are gifted God's world as our inheritance. The world that he made to be very good so that we may share it, care for it, tend it, and transform it. Until the time when God's plan has been fulfilled and heaven and earth 
are made one again in Christ. God intends to flood the whole cosmos, heaven and earth together, with his presence and with his grace. He doesn't intend to leave earth to rot and making do for all eternity with only one half of his creation. No, God wants our earth to reflect the values of heaven. In Christ, heaven meets earth, Paul tells us. In our adoption as God's children, we have become Christ's sisters and brothers. Through God's Holy Spirit, each one of us is linked to heaven. Through Christ, each one of us is linked to our fellow believers the world over. Through each one of us, this world is linked to heaven. And that is how the world will be changed, through each Christian, through each one of us. Paul's letter to the Ephesians invites each one of us to play a part in the healing of this world, invites each one of us to use the lavish gifts that God's gifts to us to bring about peace. And if we rightly feel that this task is daunting, Paul assures us that the gifts of grace that we've already received are sufficient for us to play our part in God's vision for this world. Because we start at home with each individual believer. Our world will be transformed by every changed life, one by one, person by person, starting with each one of us, with our own lives. We are God's ambassadors, who in our own lives show forth the gifts of grace, one by one, community by community, starting with each one of our congregations. We are the peacemakers that God places in each community who will show forth the gifts of his peace, one by one, place by place, starting in our own cathedral community and in this city of Melbourne. When we begin to see the world through God's eyes, we may begin to see the whole universe changed for good as each individual is changed, beginning with you and me as each community is transformed, beginning with our own, as each place is renewed, beginning with this city and church. This incredible vision is set before us today, both as a gift and as a challenge and opportunity, the gift of God's Spirit, the lavishness of God's grace to sustain us, comes with a challenge to let our eyes be opened to God's vision for this creation, a world that is cared for by each one of us, a world that is prepared for his peace by each one of us. Now, you might think that this is incredible, but when I was a child, my homeland was divided. Half of Germany was locked away behind high fences and walls toppled with, topped with razor wire, guarded day and night by army and by police. Ambassador Fitchen just called it one of the harshest and most heavily guarded borders of the world. When I grew up, I did not believe that I would live to see the day when those powerful instruments of oppression would be toppled and the two parts grow again together into one united Germany. Nor would I have believed that this process would be accelerated by a group of parishioners in one Leipzig church meeting together to pray, to sing psalms, light candles on Monday afternoons. But that is exactly the mystery of God's will, to change our world bit by bit. And as God called the church in Leipzig to start a movement of prayer and hope, of community and peaceful process that would topple the Berlin Wall, so he calls us today to begin to change the world, starting in our own city. As we embark on this month's reflection together, I pray that God, the giver of all good things, would pour out the lavish gifts of grace on us and use us in his service, that God would pour his spirit into our lives and move our hearts to prayer, that God would equip us to recognize, to discern our gifts and move us to good works, to build up his kingdom right here in the heart of Melbourne. May we be equipped by God's lavish generosity to work together to transform our city and our church.
May we who have placed our hope on Christ find that we have already been equipped to live for the praise of his glory. May we fulfill in our own time and generation God's plan that our earth will again reflect the values of heaven. Words of encouragement from later in the epistle to the Ephesians. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>